Hey, my name is Milan, and in today's video, I want to talk about a problem that most of us who are using AI-powered coding tools are encountering. Whether you are using GitHub Copilot, Cursor, or Gemini, the problem is still the same. These tools are very good at generating the code for this new feature that you're working on. So coding is no longer a bottleneck. However, debugging, reviewing, and verifying that this code is correct is still a problem. Now, you can use tools like static code analysis in .NET or even a more powerful tool like SonarCube. However, the overall flow is still broken. You have to generate the code in the IDE and then switch over to SonarCube to see if any new issues come up, then go back to the IDE to fix that problem. And you can see how this context switching can add up. So in this video, I want to introduce you to the SonarCube MCP server that's going to allow us to bridge the gap between our AI-powered IDEs and all the powerful capabilities that SonarCube can offer to help us catch and fix issues in our code faster. I'll be using Cursor for this demo to show you the exact problem that we are running into with AI-powered coding tools. Let's take this simple to-do application, which is also part of my free clean architecture template, and let's take a look at this use case for creating a to-do. So what we have in here is basically some simple CRUD code with raising a domain event, so nothing too spectacular. Now let's say I want to use Cursor to develop a new use case that is going to allow me to take an existing to-do item and just create a copy. So I'm going to ask it something like, can you create a copy to do feature similar to what's going on in the create to do command handler. I'm also going to give it a bit more context. I want to be able to pass in a to do ID and the use case should create a copy with the same values and a bit more context. Make sure to include all the relevant files. So these are going to be our command, the handler the validator and also the API endpoint. And I'll hit enter. I'm using agent mode. So this will get passed to an LLM. It's so going to take a look at my code base, figure out what I already have inside, and then use that as a baseline to develop my new feature. So you can see in the sidebar how the agent is working on my new feature. We already have our new use case in the copy folder. So if I go there, we can find our copy to do command which contains the user and their to-do ID that we want to copy. Then we have the respective command handler that is going to fetch the user, it's going to fetch the to-do, and it's going to create a copy based on the existing to-do. We also have the respective validator. And lastly, there's this endpoint class that is going to tie everything together. So here we have our incoming API request mapping our endpoint, which is going to call the respective use case using the command handler and then return the respective result back to the API caller. So you can see how in a matter of moments, we created a completely new use case using cursor as our AI powered coding tool. So now you might be thinking, okay, this is awesome. I can sign off on this feature, commit everything and call it a day. And this type of thinking can really get you into trouble. So the next important step is to debug this code, make sure that you didn't introduce any unwanted behavior, and definitely scan it for any security vulnerabilities. Now, granted, our use case is somewhat simple, but you can imagine how inside of more complex code bases, like you're typically going to see at your job, this problem might be more serious. So this is where SonarCube comes in. It's a very powerful tool that I've been using for many years now. And let me switch over to SonarCube Cloud to show you what we have inside of this code base. Now, in the meantime, I will accept all the changes made by cursor and I'm going to commit them and push them to my repo. This is my SonarCube cloud dashboard where I already connected my project from a GitHub repo into SonarCube. And if I go inside, I can see the current status of my repository. We have some baseline info here, but if I go into the main branch, you can see that the last analysis that was performed less than a minute ago has some warnings. And then we can go ahead and examine what those issues are. Now, these are going to be listed in the issues tab. And here you can examine what SonarCube detected in your code base and start fixing these problems one by one. And you can see this disconnect between having to develop the code in cursor and then switch over to SonarCube to browse the UI to see what's wrong and then go back to cursor and fix that and so on. And when it comes to what SonarCube can do for you, you can see there are different types of problems that SonarCube detects. The most important ones are going to be any security vulnerabilities and you want to make sure to pay attention to these issues and fix them ASAP. We're going to examine what they are back in cursor. When we connect this to the MCP server in just a moment, the other types of issues are reliability issues and then maintainability issues. Now, some of these may be a non-issue and you can mark 
mark them as false positives if you don't want to be working on this or you think SonarCube made a mistake or you can mark them as accepted as in this is a valid issue but I don't want to fix it right away. Now if you want to get started you can do that completely for free because SonarCube who is also the sponsor of today's video offers a very generous free plan that's going to allow you to connect your GitHub repositories and also from other providers like Azure DevOps or GitLab. If you don't want to use SonarCube Cloud there's also a self-hosted option called the SonarCube server which you can run locally and connect to your applications to scan your code for code quality violations, security vulnerabilities, maintainability issues, and much, much more. So now that we've set the stage, I want to introduce you to the SonarCube MCP server. This is the GitHub repo for the SonarCube MCP server. MCP is short for Model Context Protocol, and it's a protocol that allows your AI agents to communicate with third-party APIs, in this case, SonarCube Cloud or SonarCube Server. Now, if you scroll down, you can find some instructions for how to set up the SonarCube MCP server with many of the popular AI coding tools like Cloud Code, Codex CLI, Cursor, Gemini CLI, GitHub Copilot, and so on. But I want to make a quick intermission to just explain on a high level how the SonarCube MCP server and MCP servers in general work when it comes to interacting with our AI IDEs. I'll jump into my drawing board to explain this. And what I want to demystify is how MCP, which is short for Model Context Protocol, works in practice. So I have my cursor ID here. This will represent our SonarCube MCP server. So let me state that clearly. This is the SonarCube MCP server. And then we have our SonarCube Cloud instance. So these actually represent three distinct components in our overall workflow. So what I have here is what's called an MCP client. Our next component is going to be the MCP server. And finally, we have our third party APIs. Let's denote this as an external API or server. So let's first imagine what happens if we don't have an MCP server. Our MCP client, cursor in this case, would have to communicate directly with the SonarCube API. And you can see how this becomes problematic because you now need to make integrations for every possible tool that you want to use. This can be many other third party APIs, it can be databases, files on your local system, anything that might be useful in the context of an MCP client, which is actually our AI powered coding tool. So what MCP tries to solve is it represents a protocol for how an MCP client can communicate with external tools and services. An MCP server is there to accept a request from our MCP client and then figure out how to translate this into our respective request to our external API. So in this case, this is going to translate the request to the SonarCube Cloud instance, or it can be the SonarCube server, depending on what you're using. And then it also needs to accept the response from our SonarCube Cloud instance. So let's say accept response from SonarCube. It can be either Cloud or the server instance. And the last step is then taking that response and returning it to our MCP client. So this is what the SonarCube MCP server is going to allow us to do. We can interact with it, through the cursor ID without ever having to navigate away from cursor in order to interact with SonarCube. Also, if you want to start using SonarCube to improve your code quality and fix any security vulnerabilities, go ahead and click on the link that's going to be in the pinned comment right below this video. Now let's jump back to the SonarCube MCP server GitHub repository. And here, let's take a look at the cursor section where you have simple buttons that are going to allow you to connect the MCP server to cursor. Now you can choose between SonarCube Cloud and SonarCube server, because I'm using SonarCube Cloud, I'm going to click this button here, and this is going to prompt me to open cursor. When I click this button, I'm navigated to my cursor settings, and you can see that we are on the tools and MCP tab in the settings. We are prompted to install an MCP server called SonarCube, and you can see the command line arguments that are needed to run the MCP server. I already showed you that the SonarCube MCP server is also free, and you can run it as a simple Docker container. So you can see the command here is docker run. We're specifying the SonarCube token as an environment variable, and I'm going to show you how to generate this in just a moment. And then here is the image that we are running inside of our container. Now we do need to specify the SonarCube token and the SonarCube organization environment variables. Now the name of the org is going to be the name of my organization, which is M. Jovanovic, and then I need to specify the SonarCube token. So I'll jump back into my SonarCube Cloud instance, and from here I'm going to click on my profile dropdown, go into my account, 
and then security and here you can generate a new token so let's give this token a name i'm going to call this the sonar cube mcp server token and after you click generate token it gets created and you can also see the token value here that you can copy to your clipboard so now we need to add this value as an environment variable back in cursor i'm going to drop that in and then click install now make sure that you have docker desktop running in the background otherwise you're going to run into some problems where the mcp server isn't properly installed if i open up docker desktop you can see that there's now a new container running and it's running my sonar cube mcp server image so this is how you can verify that your installation has completed successfully you will also see a green icon here and you can also click on the drop down to analyze the tools that you have available on the SonarCube MCP server. So this is another component that an MCP server does. It exposes a schema that tells the MCP client what are the available tools that you can call on the MCP server, and then it acts as an intermediary to take in the incoming client request and also any tool calls made by the agent and send off that tool call to the respective server that's going to handle this request. In our case, this is going to be SonarCube Cloud. Some of the interesting tools that the SonarCube MCP server offers are the ability to take a code snippet and send it off to SonarCube to analyze and it'll give you back any issues that it manages to find. You can also search for any Sonar issues in a specific project. You can get the quality gauge status for your project and then there are a bunch more tools you can explore. And if you want to explore this together with me with either your SonarCube cloud instance or a local SonarCube server, you can get started by clicking the link that's going to be in the pinned comment right below this video. Now, let me show you how we can use this. I'll create a new chat and let's start by saying, can you give me the latest quality gate status for my project using SonarCube. So now when I send this request and assuming our MCP server is installed correctly, we should see cursor trying to make a tool call. You can see it's first trying to run the search my SonarCube projects command and I'm going to run this. It's going to find two projects and it decides that the correct one to use is the Clean Architecture Template project, but this time it's using a different tool. It's called the Get Project Quality Gate Status. So let's run this. It's also trying to do the same for my second project. I'm going to skip this. And in the end, it's going to list out the Quality Gate Status for the project that I'm currently working on, which is the Clean Architecture Template. And from this, we can see that our Quality Gate Status is okay. We passed all of the available checks. Now let's see if we have any security vulnerabilities. I'm going to say, list out any security vulnerabilities and I'll copy the project key. I'll specify it in my prompt using SonarCube. Let's send this off. And again, you can see a tool call to our MCP server is going to search for our projects and then it's going to search for issues in these projects. We get a response back from the NCP server and then it's going to list out the ones that are security vulnerabilities. So you can see how the agent is able to filter out the response we get back from SonarCube Cloud. Now from here, you can actually navigate to the line in the code where the security vulnerability is detected. And in this case, it's going to be on line 16 where I'm specifying the symmetric security key. And this is because I'm exposing my JSON web token secret through I configuration. Now the context that's missing here is that I configuration also gets values from the environment variables. So depending on your use case, this might be a serious security issue that you should definitely fix. If you actually did commit any secret values into source control, you want to get rid of that and change your secret keys. But in my case, I'm going to just update the status of this issue to accepted. So I'll say, can you update the status of issue and I'll specify the issue ID. You can get this from the SonarCube UI or you can also ask the agent here to figure that out for you. I'm just going to make sure that this doesn't fail by specifying it myself and I'll say can you update the status of this issue to accept it. So let's send this off and let's see what's going to happen when the agent interacts with our MCP server and it's using this new tool that we didn't see so far. It's called change sonar issue status and you can see the arguments here, our issue ID and the new status, which is accept. So I'm going to run this and we also get a confirmation from our agent. Now, if I jump into the SonarCube Cloud UI, I'm currently looking at all of my issues, but if I filter the status by accepted, you can see that this is the one issue that I just updated using the SonarCube MCP server. Now let's try to actually find some issue and fix it. I'm going to say, can you list out all the issues that I have in the current project. So again, it's going to search for issue in my project using the correct project this time. So let's run this and it's going to give me back 
all of the issues that I currently have. And note that it's also going to print out the issue key. So let's try to figure out some of the code quality issues. And I want to specifically focus on the one here targeting the user context. So let's go there. And the problem here is throwing system application exception, which shouldn't be thrown by your code. So we can try fixing this by either fixing it ourselves or asking the LLM to fix it for you. So for example, I can copy the details here and let's add it as a prompt to the cursor agent. Can you fix this issue? And let's pass in the context below. So now cursor is going to try to fix this. And it does it in a simple way by just throwing the invalid operation exception. But I'm going to ask it to create a custom exception type that it can nest in the same file. Now you can see that cursor creates a new exception called the user context unavailable exception. And it throws that instead. So let's accept these changes. And now if I go ahead and commit this and we jump into the SonarCube Cloud UI, you can see that we currently have a new analysis in progress. So our changes in the repository get picked up automatically and we can see the SonarCube analysis is running. Now, if you're wondering how this is actually working, there's this excellent app you can add to your GitHub called SonarCube Cloud that simplifies the integration between your GitHub repo and your SonarCube cloud instance. It also works inside of your PRs. And as I just showed you, it's going to automatically sync the changes that you make in the repository and kick off the analysis in your SonarCube cloud instance. Your other two integration approaches are manual integration by running a .NET tool. I'm going to leave the link to it in the description below, or you can integrate this into your CI CD pipeline. And now if we check out our SonarCube cloud instance and filter down to the fixed issues, you can see that the issue that we were trying to fix was actually marked as resolved by SonarCube. You can see the new lines of code that were added to help you in resolving this issue. So now I think you better understand what the overall flow is going to look like with the SonarCube MCP server. We can list out any issues, sign them off to the agent to fix, commit our code, continue working on some new feature as the SonarCube analysis is working behind the scenes, then fix any new issues that might potentially arise and so on. And we can do all of this without ever having to leave Cursor or Copilot or whatever AI powered coding tool that you are using. Let me know in the comments what you think about using SonarCube to analyze your AI generated code. I have to say that I've personally been using SonarCube for many years on the many projects I was involved in, and I absolutely love working with it. And now having the ability to use it with an MCP server from Cursor, which is my go-to AI coding tool, is definitely a step up when it comes to productivity. Now, if you're looking to get started with SonarCube, go ahead and click the link that's going to be in the pinned comment right below this video. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so that this gets recommended to more .NET developers and we help them solve their security and code quality issues before they send off that PR to their teammates. Once again, thanks a lot for watching and until next time, stay awesome.